I'm Brenda from Rock and Load, and um, tonight I'm in Belfast in the Limelight with Logan Mader and Dylan Trollope from Once Human. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Um, if we could just start off with the fact that, I mean, there's been a lot of fuss about Once Human at the minute, and mostly because Logan Mader is in it, X Machine Head, X Soulfly. Um, I'm just wondering, could you? So they give me a brief rundown for my Rock and Load readers, how this collaboration can bite, how the band got put together. Well, it started when Monty Connor from Nuclear Blast sent me some video clips of Lauren Hart playing guitar. Okay. And he thought that I might want to do a production deal or help her build a band, because I've done that as a producer. Okay. A few times, and I like doing that. It's sort of a passion project type thing to yeah. find a new talent and help them write songs and build a band and get it signed, and I've gotten a couple of signed. Yeah, all these little new projects, yes. Yeah, one, Monty signed one when he was at Roadrunner, and at EMI signed another one that I did, and then there was a, a recent one at, at Razor and Tie as well. Um, so, it started like that, and she comes in, I took a meeting with her, and she's like talking about black metal, and she plays guitar, and she has this brutal growling voice, and I was like, this is really cool, it's, it's different from what I'm used to doing, and... Uh, <coughs> So we started writing, and I, uh, we wrote one song, and it's actually on the album, it's called Time of the Disease, that's the first song we wrote. Yeah. And then we went and did another one, and by that time I started really just feeling attached to the music and getting inspired to play again. Again, yes. And so I did. And I was also, so I've been producing for like 12 years. And yeah, that uh, was, was going to ask you about that, the 12 year break. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I was always very creative and completely living my life, you know, surrounded by music, yes. um, as a producer and mixer and composer and artist manager and developer and all these things in the music business. Um, but then in 2013, I was at, I was hanging out at uh, Golden God Awards in LA and in the, like, the VIP area where a lot of musicians are just hanging out. So out of the blue at Golden God Awards, Ivan Moody from Five Finger Death Punch, who I've known for a long time and wow. he's a friend he comes up to me and says I want to do a side project and I want you to play guitar in it that's out of nowhere and I was like that was like the first time I had even considered playing again because I was just really comfortable in my life in my work doing studio stuff okay but that felt like a really cool opportunity so I thought about it for a couple of days and I contacted him and I said I want to do it so I got really excited and I was writing some songs for that project mm -hmm. And then John Moyer, the bass player from Disturbed, got enlisted by uh, by uh, Ivan as well. So yeah. I, I met up with him, and he came to my studio, and we started writing together. And it was really cool music we were doing, and Ivan liked it. But when it came down to really making the time that a project like that would deserve, in between his busy five finger death punch schedule and his family schedule, it's like he just really didn't have enough time yeah. to do it. So we were like, okay. And... Uh, you know, I was like, all fired up and ready to play, and then, no. <laughs> so you were that, disappointed then? Was well, I was, yeah, I was yes. disappointed, but not, like, devastated. Um, so, some good things came out of it. Okay. M my desire to play music again came out of that. Yeah. Uh, meeting John Moyer and writing good music with him came out of that. He's a friend of mine now, and uh -huh. he's a great collaborator. And uh, one of the songs that I wrote for that project got kind of reworked and morphed into a Butcher Babies song because I produced a recent Butcher Babies wow. album so uh -huh. and it, it's, it's a single it's called uh, Take It Like uh, it's called Never Go Back I don't know much about them but yes yeah it's uh -huh. like it's like one of the songs on their album so it was not it, a lot of good things came out of that so I'm mm -hmm. grateful that, that Ivan came up to me that day and said that yeah. even though the project we, we were talking about didn't happen so all these other things and then so and that was right around the time when I met Lauren and so I, I felt like, okay, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. And I actually really felt like this is kind of like something I have to do. Something inside my intuition was telling me that I should do this. And I'm glad I'm doing it. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. It's fulfilling to be touring again with this great band and to, uh, you know, make a record. And we're going to make another record and hopefully many. Yeah. And hopefully tour a lot because I really enjoy it. And it's cool this time around. Uh, 
You're very multi-talented. Well, I think you're just itching, aren't you, to get stuck in really full on? Yeah, and I'm not stopping producing. In yeah. fact, I was mixing on that's tour. What, that's what I was going to ask, actually. Is this your sole project at the minute, or are you still producing for other bands? Uh, I'm doing every, everything. Everything. I'm not stopping <laughs> at all. Yeah. I was mixing stuff in a mobile Pro Tools rig on this tour and doing some mastering and while we're on tour. Wow. And I have stuff lined up for when I get home. To jump in, so I never want to stop producing and mixing and writing. Did, did I read that you helped produce Gujira's last album? I worked on The Way of All Flesh, second to last one. They're my favorite band. At the moment. Yeah, they're amazing. I saw them a few months ago. I still haven't come down. I swear, I'm still up there. They're amazing live. Brilliant live! Oh yeah. my god, I punched everybody around. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's me. Um, I was gonna say, yeah. Well, that was you've basically answered half of my yeah. questions for me. I mean. Um, this is the right time for you. It's new and it's exciting. Are, are you doing? Do you, where do you see yourself going with with once human? I mean, do you see yourself developing the sound? I mean, you seem to have a unique sound. Okay, that's definite. And some of the songs are, for want of a better word, quite dreamy and orchestral at the beginning and stuff. Was that all down to personal taste? I mean, that, that or was just a result. Would of that have come from? not being too cheeky. Maybe the relationship that has developed between you and Lauren, do you think it has come into it somewhere? <laughs> well, there's Some a gap. Well, like, I'm like, oh, I love that song. <laughs> there's a chemistry with yeah. her and I. We, we wrote all the music and the lyrics together uh, on okay. the first album. And it's just a pure blend of her musical personality and mine. Yes. You know, it's just, that's what happened. Okay. You know, like using orchestral elements is something that she's she writes a lot of orchestral pieces and always has and when she plays piano and stuff. She's very talented. She's very yeah. talented. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I've messed with a lot of orchestral elements and mixing them in with metal and rock and industrial in doing uh, music for visual media. Like I did the soundtrack for Metal Gear Rising, a video game for Konami, and I've scored a couple movies and I've done a lot of trailers, uh, movie trailer music. That's the one thing that struck me when listening to some of the songs. That this could be movie soundtracks. Seriously, that's yeah. what was going through my so head because I love all my space things. I love uh, the yeah. geek. Yeah. So, so that just, you know, it's, it just came out like in a pure creative sense, not with an agenda to like fit into a genre or yeah. just to play to anyone in particular. It seems to be it natural. Was, yeah, it was natural, and it's really cool. I think what what we did is special and unique. Yes. Um, but I think the sound will develop. A lot um, on the second record for a few reasons, just because we've been playing together now live. Yes, you know, we've you done like forty-five shows. Well, we, we have ideas, but we haven't done it yet. Oh, yeah. good. We're still, going yeah, we're still in this touring cycle, so yeah. But now we have, you know, Skylar Howard and Dylan Trollope in the band. They weren't there before. They came in after the record yeah. was done. Damien mm -hmm. was there, our bass player. He's I've known him for a long time, and he played his bass part. So now we have more writers that we want to implement because he's a Dylan's plays guitar and he's a writer as well as yes, really he was good telling drummer. That's what I was going to ask. How does the writing process work? Within you guys come in, is it just you and Lauren or is it everybody brings something to the table? Well in the life I remember it was Lauren and I we did everything because you did everything in the that was okay. everyone at the table. Now we have this band, you mm -hmm. know, and we have a chemistry and more musical minds to you know that's utilize brilliant. so that yeah. that in itself we don't know where that's going to go because yeah. everyone is going to be able to write and collaborate with the second record how so hard is it do you think to um to come up with a band that well first of all you've got a bond you've got you've got to be on an equal terms with each other um how hard is it to come up with a band that are very like-minded or do you like the diversity maybe of different different tastes coming in do you like that Will, to help develop the music in the future for the band? Yeah, like creatively speaking? Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. there's, yes. I think it's Sorry, de definitely clear. more musical minds, the better. Yeah. As long as there's a common thread of that ties it together, you yes, know? Yes, obviously too. Yeah. Are you hoping to create a one sound that is only, when, once we hear it, we know that that's one's human? Is that, is that what you're aiming for? Um, but do you know whenever a yeah, Fear Factory song starts yeah. up, you know it's Fear Factory? Do you know that kind of a way? Or do you, or well, you, are you happy trying, to develop? We're, do, we're just doing it and we're going to always be open-minded. Open-minded? Yeah. That's great. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Um, I had questions. I believe we have some identifying marks already. Like yes, I think you sound, do. Like with yes. Lauren's vocal and just the, the general vibe of like my riffing and my guitar tone and stuff. Yes, your yeah. guitar is amazing. How, how does Lauren prepare for the stage? How does she? I mean, she looks so cute and petite and she's beautiful. <laughs> and then she opens her mouth and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> how 
I do, how does she prepare for her stage persona? She looks like an angel and sounds like a devil. Yeah, <laughs> that, I, I did have worse words, but I'm, I'm not going to say them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> oh, well, like a bitch out of hell. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mess with her, put it that way, but she's on the stage. <laughs> yeah, she's, uh, she kills it every night. She's never shown any signs of fatigue, and she prepares every night very... Yeah. Is this a discipline. natural thing or do you have to train to do what she, Laura does? She took a lot of voice work. Um, she did a lot of voice work as when she was in acting school like a long time ago. Oh, right. Okay. And she taught herself how to growl like she does correctly through the, the through the diaphragm that doesn't hurt her voice. Ah, oh, so it's so like it's a totally a deep, different set yeah, of parts It's not something? really in the throat. It's like down here. Yeah. And she taught herself how to do that messing around like um, in, a, in a garage band like she was friends with some guys in a band that yeah. she would hang out with when she was a teenager and she taught herself to growl and she wanted to play in a band and they wouldn't let her because she was a girl. Oh, because right. <laughs> it was a boy thing, was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that, she had that already developed and then since then, um, when like when we're touring, she does a long vocal warm-up every day. Yeah. Like a full-on singing warm-up. Yeah, because she's got a beautiful singing voice as well. Yeah, and also voice work that's based in um, acting voice work, she does that as well too. It's more breathing oriented and more primal kind of stuff. So yes. She does that every, she's doing it right now, that's why she's not in the interview, she does that every night before we play. It's a big change for Lauren as well. She, she's moved from Australia. Is she in California constantly now? Has she moved over? Um, yeah, she moved to LA oh, sorry. in know. January like uh -huh. 2014 and I met her like in April. She okay. moved a few months before, and she she was living in Australia, and she just something was telling her to make a change in her life and go, and so she did, and she got there with like no money. She had like bought a cheap guitar and a shitty apartment to live in, and yeah. just went to L.A. and somehow through random occurrences okay. she got connected with me, and then we've been doing and it that's since. It? Yeah. Okay. I want to ask you about the song. We live in Las Vegas now, though, actually. You live in Las Vegas now? Right? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. But no, that's just now. We just moved there. Okay, yeah. okay. Like, um, People Las Vegas. Do you like it in Las Vegas? Love it. Really? Yeah. Are you a gambler? <laughs> you go I'm in the guitar? Oh, I'm in the you don't stand. It's not the guy that stands with the shorts and the hat. Is it, is it in Las Vegas with the guitar? <laughs> yeah, I'm in the music business. I guess that says I'm a gambler. <laughs> yeah. No, well, you, you seem to have your fingers dipped in a lot of pies. <laughs> yeah, I play poker. I play poker tournaments. No you know, way. <laughs> like Semi professionally, I do. I do pretty well. That, but I, I love do you it. have a look? Do you have the poker face? Yeah. Do you know the giveaways and stuff? I'm pretty good. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, I'd love, I'm, I'm terrible. But mainly I'm just I patient. I could lie to save my life. <laughs> I don't lie. I'm just patient more just, than anything. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Like, I can't imagine it. And I can read people pretty well. Really? Yeah, but I don't try to make moves. I don't try to, yeah. try to bluff. You don't? No. So you're just sitting there very plain and taking it all in? This is my poker face. Just <laughs> do you wear glasses? <laughs> sometimes I wear sunglasses, but not often. I don't know, sometimes yeah. I do. Right, I'm dying to ask, and I'm going to say the, the words, okay? I don't care who likes and who doesn't. The song, You Can't, okay? Mm -hmm. I was saying to Dylan earlier that you say that to anybody around here. You don't wake up until the middle of next week. So how did this come about? What, 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 what is the message behind this song? Well, <laughs> Lauren came up with that line, and she... She's from Australia, and in Australia, the word cunt is like anything is a cunt. Like everything is a cunt in Australia. Yeah, it's it's not as offensive. Yeah. And okay. in, in, in England, it's not as offensive. I guess in England, if you say cunt with the T, that's yeah. bad. Yeah, you're pushing it. But if you're it? just like, yeah, cunt, come on, cunt, look at you. Like, if you don't. <laughs> that's very good, it. London accent. <laughs> well done. So, yeah. but in America, it's pr pretty much only an offensive word towards females. Like, it, yeah. yeah. It's Over like here, a bad it's word. offensive to everybody. Yeah. Um, if you call it to a guy, you're you're knocked out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Call it to a girl, the you're still average. knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I see that Lauren. Um, she produced and wrote the video. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. She's dabbing her. She's like you, isn't she? She's dabbing yeah. her fingers and everything as well. Yeah. Is this something she wants to to carry on with or develop? She loves it. I see. When I watched her do that, she just shined. She's really good at it. Uh -huh. She's a natural and. Um, it's a it's a it's a big talent that she has that I w I think should be developed. I think she should do more video directing. And she's only young as well. She's quite young. Yeah, yeah. She's got a whole thing in front of her. Yeah. So, um, uh, let me see now, because a lot of these questions were for Lauren. As I mean, I can guess. tell you a little bit from <laughs> Lauren about the video. She 
she has a message behind it that's like it's it's not really hard, easy to to get because at at a glance it's like okay a crazy doctor crazy visual, serial killer guts, blood guts yeah yeah and, <laughs> and dead girls it's like <laughs> kind of cliche and done before but what she was trying to say with that is like the the doctor the bad guy <clears throat> is a, is a representation of the entertainment industry and all the girls the victims are the artists it's a who, metaphor who get you yeah who get used up until they're of no use anymore and get changed and altered and then mm -hmm. thrown away and on to the next and in this case, Lauren, the character she played, was a possessed girl who, who had, you know, like, demons inside her. And when he got to her, she, he ended up killing her and yeah, getting, see, getting see, revenge see, on behalf of the artist, I guess. I think Lauren's going to come across as one of those artists who seems to be quite vocal about who she is. Mm -hmm. And she's not going to be afraid to tell everybody as well. Is that is that really coming from her? Is that kind of a stage persona? Or is she really going to make her music with her stamp on it from her personality? Yeah, she's not ever going to. She's very gonna, vocal, isn't yeah, she? She's about not, how she feels. She's never going to do something that she doesn't feel 100% about. Yeah. Like, she'd rather not do it. Yeah, because the entertainment yeah. industry these days is. Yeah, because yeah. people look, have always looked at her and, and said, just by the, her look, like, you're a pop singer. You should be a pop singer, or a commercial yeah. radio rock singer, or something. And she she's a metal girl, and she didn't want to do it. Yeah. She's not passionate about that kind of music. She likes metal. She's she likes her metal. Yeah. So, what can we expect from the from the album? Are you playing the full album tonight? Actually, our set got cut a little bit short tonight. We're cutting two songs out. So we're playing six songs tonight, right? Six songs. Okay. Yeah, we play. I mean, we only have forty-five minutes of music total, but yeah. uh, we're playing thirty minutes tonight. It's um, five songs from the album and one cover song. That okay. was by Machine Head. Oh, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, I've so. seen them one, I've seen, I may have seen it, I don't know if it was yeah, maybe like 10, 12 years ago actually, in the cool. Ulster Hall in Belfast, yeah. So it's the song, uh, yeah. Davidian, the first song from the first album that I co-wrote. Okay. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of kids out in these crowds that know me from those days, so. Yes. When we play that and she announces it, people go crazy, yeah. it's awesome. Uh, I've seen a lot of people putting a lot of comments and things out them. Where's, where's, where's Logan Mater with the red dreads? I mean, what's, why have you gone blonde? <laughs> but then you used to have red, red I hair. never really had red. I had like green and... Green and every other yeah, color? Yeah. Maybe yeah. I have one or two red at one yeah. point. Are they real? Yeah, these are my really? real Really? How have, long are they when they're dying? Are they they're down, down to my waist. Wow. Yeah. But the thing about them is I cut them off. These are the dreads I've had all my life. I, I grew them for 14 years. Right. Then I cut them off like seven years ago. And I put them in a bag and just saved them you for kept some them? reason. <laughs> yeah, and then when we started doing this band, I felt like I wanted the long hair again. Yeah. You like that look? Do you think that yeah, comes with you the flailing guitar? All I hear is Logan Mater flailing guitar, flailing dreads. Yeah, yeah. it's part of my uh -huh. thing. Yeah. And I had them there, and so I went to this place in LA called Rust Salon, and they, she does dreadlock stuff, and she figured out a way to. Put them back on again? Reattach, yeah, so they're like, that was Are they waxed a year ago. on it? Is it waxing? No, there's, or an weighed them? there's an elaborate, like, there's clamps and wraps and sewing, and and that's it. And like, So these dreads are. These are old, old dreads. 15, 16 years old? More? Well, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. They sat, well, they're actually older than that because they sat in a bag for right. seven years. Um, what would be the one thing you would miss once being human? If you were not going to be human, what would be the one thing you would miss? Aha, mm. uh -huh, I've stumped them. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole once human, I, I read about it, it was originally we once were human, because you take a lot of your influences from films and movies and things, so in the future. So I'm just wondering, if you were not going to be human tomorrow, what would be the one thing you would miss? Well, I would miss everything that yeah. has to do with being human. I love the human experience. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, and I love most of all, you know, the people that are important to me and the music that I get to do and my kids. And For me, it would be probably half Borg. Then you could be half human, half Borg, and then you'd live longer to do more stuff. Yeah. You think about that one. <laughs> I would miss tequila and beer a lot. Too. Oh, you like it. Have you had a Guinness yet? <laughs> I have had a Guinness twice. To, twice. I had a couple of Guinness last night yeah. in Dublin, and I had one uh, yeah. today here Ooh, in Belfast. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Um, Dylan was telling me about your bus. I'm really, oh, God, the bus crash. I, yeah. That was, he was giving me the whole, you can speak now. Go ahead, good. Dylan. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Dylan. <laughs> what an evening that was. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, hanging out here 
where Logan is sitting, and um, it was me and Zoe, the lighting girl for Fear Factory, and we were hanging out, yeah, having a beer, having Everyone a conversation. Everyone else was asleep. It was yeah. like four in the morning. Yeah, four, almost five. And <clears throat> so we were just chatting, and then all of a sudden I was thrown from this end of the couch to that end of the couch. She was kind of thrown into the table, but remained rather stationary, seeing that, you know, the confines there are rather small. Yeah. So, um, after that happened, we immediately ran in and checked on the driver, and he was okay. The whole c center console and dash was destroyed. Um, so then we went upstairs, tried to figure out if everyone up there was okay. They were all okay. A police officer immediately showed up. We asked him, the other driver, and the other vehicle. They were all okay. Um, we made it to our next gig on time without any delay. It was actually quite a miracle. When we opened up the trailer to check on all of our gear, literally yeah. nothing was damaged. Are you serious? Yeah, completely serious. It was, for lack of better terms, a miracle. It was amazing. Wow. So what actually happened? I mean, did it, was it icy roads? Was it somebody ran into you? Or uh, what happened? Our bus ran into a van, a tall sprinter van. Yeah. <clears throat> we rented it. But we don't know, like, why. So, okay. It just, it happened. It was a rainy night. I don't know if it was snowing. It might have been snowing, too. It might have been, like, what we call black ice on the road? It might have been black ice. Yeah. I don't know. It was snowing a little earlier. I'm not sure if that had anything to do with it. It wasn't, yeah. How did, where, that, where how did it you feel? Like? Did that shake you up? Did that scare you? I was sleeping in my bunk, and I woke up the moment I felt the heart breaking, and then it's split, split second later, if there was an impact that threw me into my, threw my feet into the front of my bunk. Wow. That kind of hurt a little bit, but it didn't yeah. injure me. And I was like, oh, fuck, that sucks, what the hell, I mean, it, but our bass player, he had it worse, he woke up at the impact, like, the moment of impact woke him up, and in his mind, he thought we just hit something, and then we were falling off a cliff, he thought, because it was quiet, we hit, hit, and it was really quiet, and we sort of drifted oh a little God, bit. Oh, God, he thought he was in midair. So he thought, he, yeah, he thought he was falling off at the side of a mountain, and he was holding on, <laughs> holding on for dear life. Oh, the perfect. And then waiting, he's like, okay, okay, we're stuck. Then he felt this, like, moving again a little bit. So he's like, oh, fuck, we're, okay. That would have been really traumatizing for me to, to wake up and feel that. But I've, I've been on a lot of tours, on a lot of buses. Yeah. And I've never been in any minor accident or major accident at all, so that was the first. For me, it, it traumatized me a little bit, but I'm back to, like, you know... Well, it's like I, I, I'm it was said to Dylan to earlier, roll. I mean, but that, that just makes you think, I mean, every day is just for living, isn't it? You don't know yep. what's going to happen. Yeah, every day is for living. Does that make you more determined to get out there and get fingers and more pies? Yeah. <laughs> I, that's yeah. just my nature in general. I, I don't yeah. sit idle. I like to do as much as I you can. You like to be busy? Yeah. And I like, I really like doing this band for... I feel really good about it. <clears throat> I mean, in the music industry, it's fucked. And it's not, like, really easy for a new band to come out and survive at all. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you've been in one before. What do you think you're doing differently this time that's making it actually work for you? What do you... I mean... If, yeah. uh, my first band was Machine Head. That was yeah. working oh, really, before. really well. <laughs> no, but you're not there now. I'm just wondering... Oh, well, what's the thing the is, is, like... What the difference is? I, I'm really doing this... I'm doing this with a serious mind and um, yeah. serious intentions, but ultimately it's really just for the love of the music and it's for fun and my life doesn't depend on it, so... Because right. uh, I'm that diverse. Do you think makes a difference? It makes a difference in my level of stress because I don't feel like the pressure and the responsibility. Like when I was in medication, that was, that was my only thing in life and I was relying on that to do something massive so that I could, you know, sustain my life and things, uh -huh. but... Now I'm diversified and I have multiple sources of income and I can sustain my life well known and, I as well. and be happy yeah. and, and just, you know, enjoy that we get to play music that we wrote. Is, is that a whole different and, mindset? I mean, does that, how, are you more savvy now, now that you're sort of more in control of your own band, really? Well, well I'm, more, I'm more experienced and, yeah. yeah, I've got a lot more knowledge and experience and... Yeah. Um, but I don't have like that, you know, stress or pressure that a lot of bands might experience, and I have experienced before. Yeah. Hoping that some, that it's gonna work, and and hoping for approval, and hoping that this happens and that happens. It's like yeah. we're just gonna do what we do because we love it, and do it well, and that's all we can do, and enjoy the moments. Yeah. And just enjoy the moments. Yeah. 
I, yeah. From watching some of the YouTube clips of the of the band, you look like you've got a really good rapport on stage, all of you. You know, it looks it looks awesome. You can actually oh. feel the comfort. On it. Yeah, I <laughs> I feel like we have uh, a nice band chemistry yeah. on stage, which is not something that is easy to find. It also normally takes time, and it's still developing. We've only done forty shows now, so I think after a hundred shows, it's going to be yeah. even more apparent and. Uh, our bond and our chemistry and our connection will grow to the point where it's like one energy with five yeah. people creating one energy on stage and that's uh, something that takes time but I felt it the raw essence of that even from the first show we played yeah. you, you know the first it. time Dylan ever played with us was the music video shoot for You Cunt mm -hmm. oh, like really? you, we never played we never played before no yeah. we rehearsed with him the right. song a couple times okay once and then played. Skyler, our, uh, the other guitar player, that was his first time ever playing with us, was like at the video shoot. Oh, uh, wow. Were, so, you to, were you hard to audition for? Were you, were you, were you pernickety? What's the word? What would you use? Well, I've got standards. <laughs> I've got really high standards, obviously. Yes. Like, especially mm -hmm. with a band like this, a drummer has to be fucking amazing. And obviously Dylan is. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, like if in a, this kind of music... You can be really great guitar player, great singer, great bass player, mm -hmm. but if your drummer's not like on that level, it yeah. dumbs everyone down and it makes everyone else in the band seem not as good. It makes the band seem not as good. The drummer has yeah. to be like at a level for this kind of music to carry the the foundation in a live setting. So that was really important to, uh -huh. to pick a do drummer like other, that. Do you play other instruments as well as the guitar? Well, I mean, I can play bass, but. Anyway. <laughs> Anyone can play bass. No. Oh, no. What did I tell you earlier? I, what's my favorite part of any band? The rhythm section. The rhythm section, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> bass and drums. <laughs> All no, right. but I mess around with a lot of yeah. orchestral. I, I use synth, synth and piano, but it's all like, wow. you know, uh -huh. it's, it's all sort sing of it designed. All? I sing when I have to. Like, or do you growl? Can you do that? No, I don't do any growling, but I yeah. sing when I'm producing, like, to when uh. I'm co-writing or if I need to develop... Okay. Uh, like give an example for a vocal melody and uh, I've sang on some stuff that got used for sync licensing from wow. movie trailers and some video games and stuff that really? has my voice on it. Congratulations, yeah. you're doing really uh, well. Thanks. The album seems to be doing really well as well. I mean, I've been looking at the reviews. I'm dying to get my hands on it because <laughs> I would like to review it for the site. Oh so yeah, nice. I will at some point. I will. I'll go cool. and get it. Like, cause this, like I was telling Dylan. Um, I had to cram for this today. <laughs> so cool. So cool. You're all quite new to me, but I do feel very privileged because I, this band feels very exciting to me. And you're on the beginning; you're just on the verge of something really brilliant. I can see it. I can feel nice. it. Nice. Yeah. Well, it feels good. We're getting good reviews, and it's it's doing well for us so far. And yes. We're lucky to be on tour with Fear Factory. That's been great for yeah, us. How did that come about? Did they come and find you, or do you do you, do you know Fear Factory? Or? Yeah, I've known them for twenty year, plus years. Ah, right. Yes. Of so. Machine Head and Fair Factory were on the same label, and we the music's quite complimentary as well. I've noticed it's quite the bands are quite complimentary to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah it works well with this crowd. And, yeah, um, I've Dino has been a great friend of mine for many years and a good ally in music. I produced his, two of his albums for the band Divine Heresy, which was another band he did. Yes, Divine Heresy, yes, I uh -huh. did those. And his death metal side project Asasino, I did one of those records, and I worked on the Industrialist for Fear Factory. Previous record, wow, yeah, and yes, then which is our, a comic as well. Yeah, wow. yeah, and uh -huh. our bass player Damien Renault, he worked on the the Genexus album, yes. with, you know, as an engineer. Uh -huh. So there's been a lot of, uh, you know, like. Do you ever see yourselves going that way? The whole concept through the album. Do you ever see yourself sort of hitting on that? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe somewhere Maybe. down the line we do that, but mm -hmm. at that at this point, it, the songs are kind of standalone and just you know, p p pieces of expression from the moment. Okay. Right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up because you've been so patient with me and you've been absolutely wonderful to interview. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Logan. Thank you. Thank you.